Right, guys, I'm here to debunk a good bit of fear today around dredging versus kedging and how Neutron is going to get to the pad. We're going to talk about the timelines. We're going to talk about what dredging and kedging is. And then if we don't get approved for kedging and dredging, what other options has the Rocket Lab laid out on the table? Guys, my name is Liam, and I'm one of the Hustle Brothers here. We do do daily lives and daily videos on Rocket Lab, so make sure to smash that subscribe button to check us out. But without further ado, what we're going to do, we're going to jump straight into what is dredging, what is kedging, and why Rocket Lab need to do this to get Neutron to the pad. So jumping across to this article here, Rocket Lab has some genuine competition for SpaceX, but it can't reach the launch pad. So California-based startup Rocket Lab is looking to compete with industry leader SpaceX with its upcoming Neutron launch vehicle. But before it can debut its reusable rocket this year, the company has to figure out a way to transport Neutron's components to the southern tip of Wallops Island, Virginia. Rocket Lab is awaiting approval to dredge a permanent channel to mid-Atlantic region spaceport on Wallops Island, a spaceport surrounded by shallow waters and scarce infrastructure. Now, I want to say this very early on. Dredging versus kedging is completely different. Dredging is the long-term approach they're going to take in. And we are going to learn about the time frame. Kedging is the short-term approach. And we're going to learn exactly what that is and how long that will take them. So before Neutron's inaugural launch, the rocket still needs to go through final preparation on its launch pad before it can launch. And most importantly, it needs to make sure it's on the island in the first place. Stuck in the mode, Rocket Lab is contemplating an old-timely sailing technique known as kedging. So I've now introduced you to the words dredging and kedging. So let's go a little bit further into this. But looking at it, there was a recent article that came out saying that Rocket Lab's first hurdle to fly in the rocket is getting it to the pad. So they have asked regulators for permission to transport the oversized neutron structures through shallow waters to a spaceport off the coast of Virginia as it races to meet the September delivery deadline. The request, which was made in July, is a temporary stopgap while the company awaits federal clearance to dredge a permanent channel for Wallops Island site. So the temporary stoppage is the kedging. Kedging and dredging, you need to think as two separate entities. Rocket Lab has a sizable checklist to tick off before Neutron can make its orbital debut, like mating the rocket stages, performing a wet dress rehearsal, and getting the launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration. Now, guys, this is going to happen. The likes of your launch license, the likes of mating the rocket stages, the wet dress rehearsal, that is what Rocket Lab do on a daily basis when it comes to Electron. So it doesn't worry me when it comes to Neutron. Now, in relation to the dredging, Rocket Lab submitted an application for the dredging project to the Virginia Marine Resource Commission in March. In its application, the company touted the benefits of Mars, noting other launch facilities in Florida and elsewhere are highly congested, which could limit launch cadence. Mars, in contrast, will allow both frequent launch cadence and return to Earth capability of recovering boosters. Despite the upside of Mars, it's constrained in a crucial way. Existing maritime infrastructure is limited, and access to the channel, called Sloop Got, depends on favorable tides. As Rocket Lab and its co applicant, Virginia Port Authority, notes its request, there is no permanent existing means of providing safe and reliable access for large infrastructure deliveries to Wallops Island. And you need to remember, Electron is completely different. It is tiny in comparison to Neutron. So they transport that by rod. So Rocket Lab has poured millions into Mars site to ensure it's ready to support the regular Neutron launches. The company is planning to spend more than 5 million to dredge the roughly mile-long sloop so barges can perform regular deliveries of large neutron rocket components. So I want to tell you, dredging is where you more or less go in and you excavate the river. You dig out the riverbed to let more water through. 
That way you make it deeper. Neutron won't get stuck on the budge because imagine what that would look like. Speaking about Kedgen, Kedgen's an age-old maritime um, technique where they more or less put anchors in front of the barge and they mechanically pull them along um, the river. Now, number one, this isn't great for the environment because you're completely tearing up everything below you. And number two, this is labor intensive and it's expensive for what you're doing. But it is quicker than dredging. And we're going to get into the exact time frame after two. But first, I want to say this is a much better explanation than I've just given there. Kedgen is a little known nautical method. It's used to ensure the barges can safely navigate existing shallow channels. Workers use a series of anchors and lines to steer the barge through shallow waters. The company is seeking permission to use this method through until the end of June 26, or until dredging work is complete, whichever comes first. So we know that kedging, if approved, will be much quicker than dredging. They're seeking approval to kedge up until June 26. But you're going to wonder how long will dredging take? Well, I've got a nice presentation for you here. So first of all, we're going to look at dredging, and that's the long-term approach that they're going to take in. So I've made a few assumptions. We know that the length of the river they need to dredge is one mile, and that's around 5,280 feet. I'm estimating a width of around 100 feet, and we need a depth of 10 feet. So the volume to dredge will be about 1.76 million cubic yards. The dredge type we'll be using will be using a type called hydraulic cutter suction dredge. The dredging rate is around 1,000 cubic yards per hour. Continuous dredging time works out at around 73 days or 1,760 hours. So there are key constraints to this. So the average working day for construction work is between 12 to 16 hours. You do need to start for the likes of equipment maintenance, especially the fact that this is heavy work done on these machinery and the hydraulics will be pushed to the extreme. There are environmental restrictions as well, but we have seen the likes of Trump coming out recently saying that he wants to reduce the amount of environmental restrictions when it comes to rocket launchers. And this could fall under this bracket. And then there's permitting delays. So this is exactly what we're experiencing at the moment. Now, if you had 100% uptime, it would take 73 days. But we've realized that is not possible. Yes, you can work your workers if you've done it on shift work for 24-hour days. But you do need to factor in some time for equipment maintenance. Unless you just had machine after machine rolling in. But that would be very expensive. I'm looking at a more realistic time frame of three to six months. But then you wonder about kedging and what kedging is and how quickly we can get Neutron down if approved. So going across to kedging, this is the short term. This is what they're seeking approval for until May 26. So with this, the average speed of kedging through shallow waters, that is putting the anchor out in front and more or less hoisting yourself along. That's around 0.25 miles per hour. Along the mile long, that's around four hours of kedging. You're going to wonder why I've then put in one to two hours of setup and tidal alignment. So you're not going to want to kedge through empty waters because you're more or less, you need to use the water as your friend. Remember, guys, the trend is your friend. Same with the tide. Also, after the first shipment goes out, you are going to have anchored and more or less torn up the ground underneath you. So there'll be hardly any grip to fire the anchor back down. If you put it back down into the water that you have already caged, you're going to find yourself pulling up 
dirt and gravel in front of your barge and it's going to slow you down. It'll be more or less like a solid break you're pulling with you. So you're either going to have to get diggers in there to flatten out the ground every time a shipment goes through. So I have put in around one to two hours of setup or tidal alignment going into this. If you were to do this back to back, it would take you 27.5 hours. And this is just over one day. And this is exactly what Jacob was referring to in the Space Stock Spaces Talk on X. It will take just over a day for us to catch a neutron down the river. Now you're asking, what would happen if this doesn't get approved? Does that put a complete stop on neutron getting to the pad? I'm going to give you a quick answer. No, it's not. And we're going to dive into exactly why. But before we dive into why, I want to tell you exactly why we shouldn't doubt Peter Beck. We've already seen investors doubt him on two occasions during this whole neutron setup. During the concrete pouring, everyone was getting afraid that the concrete wasn't getting poured quick enough. We knew Peter said, as soon as you see concrete on the ground, you know we are hitting our timeline. Everyone started doubting them that they weren't getting the concrete poured out quick enough. Number two was the Archimedes hot fire test. Yes, they were a little bit behind schedule, but it is a rocket program after all. We had rumors last year that the engine blew up or it had completely failed, and they came out with a great success. No. How much have we improved on this engine? It's still unknown to this day, but I believe we may hear about this in the upcoming conference call. But you're all wondering what sort of method they can take if they don't get approved for kedging. We already know over the long term they will dredge. Peter wants this rocket on the pad this year, and he's not going to let kedging slow him down. And going back to this article, it says, lacking an okay to do this alternative report, Rocket Lab will be forced to transport the hardware using ramps and cranes, an approach that is impractical in the long run for achieving a profitable launch pace. It would likely result in not meeting its targeted launch date for the end of 2025 for its first neutron launch. However, all these uh, put in the target launch date for September. I agree, it would not happen in September if they had to use ramps and cranes. But I believe they would be able to get it there in October, November timeframe. Remember, one of us Hustle Brothers do work in the construction industry, so we do know how long this would take. I believe once Neutron actually physically gets to the island, you're only waiting one to two months, I believe, until we start seeing very, very substantial testing and even approval for this launch taking place. Guys, it's not all about Neutron and them getting to the pad. We have spoken about the Golden Dome and the meetings Peter Beck has been having. And guys, if you haven't seen it, make sure to check this out and also jump into the comments and have a quick chat with me about kedging versus dredging.